So hello everyone. So uh, this is Jifan from uh, Meta AI. So uh, today I'll, I'll talk about our work on uh, Webformer, the web page transformer for structure information extraction. So this is a, a joint work with my colleagues Yi, uh, Anilu, uh, Fuli, Xiaojun, and Dongfang. Uh, yeah, let's dive in. Um, so here's the outline of today's talk. So I first give some uh, uh, introduction uh, of this work, and then I talk about some you know uh, background and related work, and point out some uh, motivations. And then I will uh, describe uh, our model, which is called uh, Webformer. And uh, after that, uh, I will show some uh, experimental results. Uh, finally, I will conclude the work and uh, point out point out some you know feature directions. Okay, so uh, what is structural information extraction? So structural information extraction refers to the task of uh, extracting you know, a, a, st a structure text fields or text information of an object of interest from web pages. So uh, for example, an object could be say a, a product offer. So we want to extract a product offer from a, a shopping page, including all the information about this product offer. Uh, for example, uh, including like a uh, product title, you know, uh, uh, the offer price and product uh, brand description, uh, etc. Uh, to give a more concrete example, uh, here is a web page containing a, a, a public event. Right? The event is a family fun uh, festival. Right? It's it's um, this web page shows you know all the detailed information about this event, including. Uh, the event title, as I just mentioned, and the event date, which is September 11th, um, as well as like, um, you know, event time, event location, and description. So on the, um, you know, uh, bottom left, it, it shows some uh, HTML structure or, or DOM tree structure of this uh, web page. And uh, on the bottom right, it's the information, structural information we extracted. As I just mentioned, we got the title, description, date, time, and location for this event. Okay, so um, early works are on on information on this kind of uh, web page extraction, uh, uh, mainly focus on building you know templates from uh, for HTML DOM tree, and um, which is also called wrapper induction. So basically. Uh, this kind of methods do not scale to you know the whole web as you know obtaining accurate ground truth for all the domains is uh, uh, expensive and impractical. Um, the second issue with this method is like the wrapper go out of date very quickly, right? Because the page structure keeps changing and it, it requires a uh, periodical, so it requires a uh, uh, periodically you know uh, uh, updating. And third challenge is that uh, one also needs to generate new templates for uh, new domains, right? So, which make this kind of wrapper uh, template based method very, uh, 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 very hard to maintain. Um, the second type of you know uh, um, um, methods are the some recent uh, uh, natural language models, uh, which uh, you, uh, uses a sequential modeling technique for web page or web information extraction. So actually, our method is also along this direction, but um, there are some motivations or, or limitations with existing uh, natural language or sequential modeling uh, techniques. The first uh, limitation is that you know the structure uh, HTML layout has not been fully explored. So, uh, but you know uh, this kind of a layout HTML layout contains important information and relations about different text fields uh, on the web page. And second is that um, existing methods do not scale up to a large number of fields across domains. So, um, so which made this made this method like, not suitable for a large scale extraction, and they cannot uh, gen be, uh, you know be generalized to uh, new domains. Right. And third limitation is that you know large web document usually contains you know very long text sequences, and existing you know. Uh, uh, Attention networks or such as transformer based models, they usually limit their input to say uh, 512 or, or like a 1K uh, token input due to the quadratic computational cost, right? So how should we design a, a web 
page uh, uh, extraction model that can handle all these kind of challenges. Um, so in this work, we propose a method called Webformer. Uh, before I talk about the, all the details about our work, I'll first introduce some problem and definition. So for our web page, uh, the input is, is uh, you know, all the text sequence from the web documents, say T1 to TK. Let's say uh, basically uh, TI represents the ice text node on the uh, web and the K is the total number of text nodes, right? And know that the order here doesn't matter. So uh, I'll show that why it doesn't matter later. And um, we also denote the DOM tree of the HTML as a, a graph G uh, of node V and edge E. So V is just a set of the, uh, DOM, uh, DOM nodes in the uh, HTML uh, tree and E is just the edges containing these kind of DOM nodes. And um, so the goal is uh, given a set of tar tar target fields, F, so F1 through FM. So for example, F1 can be say a, a date, right? Then an F F FM could be say a, a title, right? So we want to extract their corresponding text information from the web documents. Um, this is the goal of this uh, work. Okay. Um, so, so the key idea is that how to encode the whole web page by leveraging all this kind of HTML uh, uh, structure uh, besides all the text features, right? So, so in this work, uh, we introduce three types of tokens. Uh, the first type of token is called, we call it HTML token. So basically each DOM node uh, in the DOM tree uh, will correspond to one HTML token. And the second is a very standard uh, text tokens, basically like uh, representing uh, the you know the text sequence in in the uh, document. And the third token we call the field token, basically the the field we want to extract, for example, date, or location, or the title, etc. And second, um, we integrate the uh, web uh, HTML layout or uh, graph attention. Uh, basically, uh, we leverage the HTML structure and use graph attention to model the you know the uh, to encode this kind of uh, HTML structure. So I'll talk about the details later. So don't worry about it. Um, so the third uh, uh, third uh, component or a third design is that we use rich attention mechanism to bridge, uh, you know, to build the, uh, for, for the embedding representation. Basically, we enable the model to encode long uh, sequence efficiently. We also empower the model for zero shot uh, extraction. So let's uh, dive in all the details about that. So as I just mentioned, essentially um, our web former model consists of three main components. Um, the input layer, the uh, web former encoder as, and the output uh, layer. So the input layer consists of, uh, you know, uh, contains the construction of the input tokens from web former as well as their embedding, including, as I just mentioned, a field token, HTML token, and, you know, the text token from the text sequence. And then the web former encoder is essentially uh, the uh, attention uh, um, uh, a mechanism that uh, including the rich uh, including rich attention patterns like uh, graph attention basically we call it HTML to HTML as well as some you know uh, HTML to text text to HTML and text to text attentions and finally the output layer is just uh, we design some softmax function to uh, get the text span corresponding to the field we want to extract it okay okay let's get into all the uh, details. Okay, here is the, uh, as I just mentioned, this is the input, right, for the, uh, or the representation for the web page. But say it, uh, in, in this example, we have, let's say, five uh, text nodes uh, on the, on the uh, web page. And then we also have a G, which is the HTML structure, right? If you can see here, right? So, so each node is a DOM tree node, like, um, and then it connects to, until the, to the, uh, the leaf node, which is the text node here. And, um, so the blue node, we call it internal HTML node, and then the green node, we call it text node, right? Uh, which is the uh, leaf node containing all the text, uh, T1 through T5. Okay, so the first component, as I just mentioned, is the input layer um, of this, of our uh, web former. So it contains a few token. In this case, uh, in, in this example, it's just date, right? We want to extract the date of this object or like a, 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 a event, let's say, right? And then we, have this kind of HTML token, basically as each uh, HTML token corresponding to a node in this uh, HTML uh, graph, right? For example, HTML and head, right? a body, so on and so forth. And then there's text tokens, which are the regular uh, tokens, 
corresponding to the all, all the you know text tokens in the text nodes, right? In this case, we have T1 through T5, and for example, T1 is fun, funny, festival, and then we have a lot of other sentence of text yeah, from the web page. Okay, um, the second component is the um, uh, web former encoder. It contains uh, five attention uh, mechanisms, attention patterns, including the first attention is, we call it HTML to HTML graph attention. Basically, um, it basically it bridge order uh, attentions uh, among the HTML tokens. Uh, in, the, in our model, uh, we, for example, for this, uh, let's say, for this body, for example, for this body uh, uh, HTML token, uh, it will attend to all the nodes it connects to, as well as, as well as itself. For example, body will connect to HTML token, sorry, I mean the root, basically root HTML, and image token, a dive one token, right? So if you can see here, so body can definitely it can attend to itself, and then uh, the root HTML token, head token, image, and dive one, right? These are the uh, one, two, three, four, four tokens at ten. Besides, in the artwork, we also enable uh, uh, sibling attentions. Basically, the body token will also attend to its sibling. In this case, it's, it's the head token here. Um, so this is uh, the graph attention, how we build it, right? So, and um, the second attention is, we call it HTML to text attention. So basically, only note that only the, you know, the text node HTML token will attend to the uh, uh, text token uh, here. So for example, P2, the HTML token P2 here, we are sent to all the text within its corresponding uh, text node. For example, in here, a P2 uh, actually is represent uh, the, the T4, right? T4 is this text. So all the text uh, tokens within this T4, we are like P2, we are attend to them. So this is called the HTML to text token, um, to text uh, attention. So uh, similarly, we have text to HTML attention. For attention, basically, each text token will attend to all the text node uh, in the HTML uh, tokens. Uh, sorry, not text node. Sorry, uh, each text uh, 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 each text token will attend to all the HTML tokens uh, in, the, uh, in the in the graph. And uh, so we ha also have text to text uh, relative tension, which is uh, just a normal uh, relative tension similar to the uh, uh, in the transformer type of work. And finally, we have the few tokens will fully attend to all the uh, HTML tokens. Right. This is how we build this kind of tension mechanisms. Um, and then we have, you know, stacked uh, reformer layers. Basically, we use like uh, 12 layers, six layers, uh, and more layers. We have different configurations. And after the, you know, the, the final layer, we have uh, output the embeddings for all these kind of tokens. And then we can build uh, output layer, for example, we can build, uh, you know, uh, use HTML, root HTML token embedding uh, to build like say page classification, right? We can say, oh, whether this is a shop page, shopping page, product page, or like event page, right? And then we can also use like, um, you know, spam based instruction layer to get the begin and end for this uh, field token, for example, date here. We then will predict, for example, December here is the begin uh, token to this date field and the 13 would be the end token. So basically December 13 would be the date here uh, we chucked it. Um, okay, yeah. Um, so sorry for the interruption. So we would probably need to wrap up pretty quickly. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, closer. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I just, just come up to uh, experiments. So here, like uh, we conduct experiments on two data sets, uh, which is our uh, SWV and common crawl. So here are the uh, statistics. And we compare our muscle method with five baselines, um, uh, like open text, sequential tagging, and as well as some uh, most recent uh, sequential uh, models. Um, we use EIM and F1 metrics, as just skip for now. Um, so I've, I have two, two more slides to talk about the uh, results. The first uh, slide shows the uh, uh, two tables containing the performance comparison with the baselines. And if you can see here, our model uh, outperformed the you know all the baselines uh, with a large margin, and um, we also have some field level uh, uh, you know results. Uh, okay, um, so he here we also conduct uh, some ablation studies like uh, without uh, a model without different attentions uh, individually, and then we 
clearly see that uh, with all the tensions, our method performed best. Um, and more interestingly, on the right, uh, right side, we see, you know, the we divided the uh, document uh, into different bu bucket with different, uh, you know, uh, text lines. Basically, like, um, and then compare all the method. If you can see that our method, from a comp you know, uh, performs consistently uh, uh, along different, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, document lines. But all, for all other methods except this DNN method, which does not depend on the uh, sequence, sequence lines, because it's like a, a, a deep neural network model, it's not a sequential modeling. So all the other sequential modeling are suffer from, you know, the uh, precision loss, uh, like uh, uh, with the increasing of the uh, document, document lines. Okay. Um, yeah, I quickly ramp up. Um, so, in, so in this work, we present the effective and efficient reformer model for structure information extraction. We have like built graph attention as well as other design, other rich attention mechanism to uh, for the embedding representation. And we conduct ex uh, comprehensive experiments that uh, you know just demonstrate superior performance of uh, reformer. So several future directions. Um, one is that we could do some multimodal learning to encode other modalities like uh, such as image. And we also want to do explore like effective zero shot, few shot learning for pre-training like uh, using prompt based learning. Also, uh, finally, we want to, um, you know, investigate into generating models uh, with uh, structured decoders. Yeah, I think um, that is pretty much about my, my presentation today. Um, yeah. Any, any, any quick question? We can take a one quick question here. Uh, Thanks, Shifan, by the way. Yeah, uh, sure. yeah anyone? Uh, I, I actually have a quick question. So for uh, the classification task, uh, to we try to predict the, the, the span, uh, so that there's a start and end. Try to, I think that's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I show here, begin and end. Uh, so are, are they just a simple softmax uh, or, or uh, any, any, anything special, yeah, uh, for, for these two tasks, yeah? Yeah, 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 good question. So for the classification token, classification task is very easy, right? It's like uh, you can just build a binary classifier or like a multi classifier. So for the uh, span extraction, we have tried different methods like uh, BOIE, right? It's like sequential tagging, like it can handle multiple occurrence also. But uh, for the simplicity in this work, we just use like uh, just softmax, like uh, to get the, uh, just one begin and one index, uh, one end index. So. Okay, sounds good.